I can clearly remember my heart raising when I purchased my first property. It was as if my heart was trying to get out of my chest. And if you feel nervous about such an important purchase as a condo unit or a house, let me say this, it's normal. So the big question is this, how busy professionals and homeowners like us make six-figure profits from the property we own safely by doing it with research, data, and numbers. How do we buy in a way without complications and half-guessing, regardless of the market conditions, and still remain profitable? That is the question. Here, I will share with you exactly what we do and how we do it. My name is Edmund Tan, and welcome to Singapore Real Estate Insider. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Singapore Real Estate Insider, Edmund Tan here. Still till the end of the video as I will be showing you real examples with numbers, how we worked out the data and numbers during the financial stage so you feel safer doing it. Numbers do not lie here. The fact of the matter is, purchasing a private property is a life-changing experience. It's a huge investment starting at a million dollars. So the fear buyers could feel is valid and must be acknowledged. Disregarding it could only make it worse. So what do you do first usually? Share in the comment below your usual practice. Let me lead you to make the right decision such as checking your finances and capabilities in fulfilling your commitments. That means having enough financial security to maintain your lifestyle while paying your property's down payment and monthly payables. More often than that, you realize that owning your first property is possible. Does that sound too good to be true? Book a consultation with us and I'll help you walk through your investment. So what's next for HDB and EC owners? Let's say you're a married couple with a HDB or EC unit and you're toying around with the idea of selling it and reinvesting the money into buying two new properties. What is the risk and how can it possibly turn out? Well, the first thing we need to consider is your current finances. Consider your outstanding loans, cash on hand, and your monthly spending. Doing an honest review of your financial status will set you for success when you need to invest. Here's an example. You and your spouse, aged 40 and 41, owns an EC worth 1.12 million with an outstanding loan amount of $509,000. Now let's look at the ladies first. Let's say you, the wife, has the following details after the sale of your current property. Your CPF refund from the property is $123,000. Your current OA amount is $91,000. You have an income of $9,200. So that sums up your total CPF amount of $214,000. Based on the sums here, you could have a maximum loan amount of $958,000, good for 25 years, and your maximum property purchase amount will come to $1.278 million. Let's do the max that you are able to buy at $1.2 million property because there are enough CPF and cash in this purchase. After purchasing the $1.2 million property, you still have a balanced fund of close to $200,000. And your monthly cash flow goes around like this. Estimated interest rate at 3%, your estimated monthly installment will come to about $4,268. And monthly top up amount is only $3,008 after deducting the usage of your monthly OA of $1,260. As for your reserve funds, the best case scenario is 66.3 months or 5.5 years. And the worst could be 45 months or 3.9 years. <laughs> Here, we are having the worst scenario that you have no employment, not working, with no money income. Would this feel safe for you? Now, on to the husband. Your CPF is 140,000, your OA at 91,000, and with an income of $8,500. So, your total CPF is $231,000. The maximum loan amount is 864,000 for 25 years, and the maximum property limit would be about 1.152 million. Match time, based on very comfortable purchase without over leverage, the purchase amount of 850,000 will be very safe. And by doing that, you still have a balance fund of 194,000. Why do we keep this amount aside? This is for raining days. 
as a safety net. The last thing you want after purchasing a property is when you fully leverage it because there is a risk that you will not be able to pay the money installment if anything happens to your job or your family. No! By planning this, this is a very safe approach to own two properties. And to assume that this monthly cash flow goes around at the interest rate about 3%. Your estimated monthly installment now is $3,108. And the monthly top up is only $1,848 after deducting your OA of $1,260 every month. So even if you do at a low rent of $2,500, you still get a positive cash flow of $652 monthly. For your reserve funds, the best case scenario is 105 months, and that is 8.8 .8 years. And the worst will be 62.7 months, which is 5.2 years. Which means, even if you intend to take sabbatical leave for a long period of time due to whatever reason, you no need to worry about your mortgage payment at all. Reserve funds as your safety net is extremely important and that is the reason we factor this in all our discussions and calculations. We build it into our assessment with clients to ensure we do not over leverage and have enough buffer to continue pay for the property even in the worst case scenario. Do you feel safer if you are just like the examples to acquire properties within your means? If you are new to this channel, hit the subscribe button now so you can get real-time updates and learn how to make wise investments for yourself and your family through properties. Let me just point this out. No matter how hard we work and save, it is still exponentially beneficial to let your hard-earned money work for you by investing in property. And this is where Singapore Real Estate Insider wants to step in, helping busy professionals like you with families like yours to make wise decisions that will prepare you for the future. By the way, when was the last time you checked on your year-on-year -year increase of your salary? Hmm, I see. Do you track and understand how much increase you get? Did you know that the average income growth is at a disappointing rate of 2.4% per year. Now, compared to those who make $300,000 in four years by investing in properties, wow, that's insane. Wow, that was amazing. And that's how you can work smart. Although income amounts in general are on the rise, the rate of increase is slower than compared to property growth. The pace is slowing down when compared to the last 20 years since 2002 and the current times for the last 10 years since 2012. A huge gap of difference, don't you think? Are you getting a higher increase of salary every year, by the way? Share in the comment, what is the average percentage growth year on year you're getting for your income? Now, let's look at the figure of two similar condo units. Note that they are in different locations but are equal in terms of target market and value. Notice that in less than five years, the prices have gone up. This shows us one fact. We don't realize we are losing so many opportunities when we don't act now. You may say, you know, Emmon, I work for a generous company and they give us bonuses throughout the year. I think we're fine. First of all, that's great. That was awesome but consider will you be able to actually save them i guess you've got a point there and if you do does it come close to what you could possibly earn by investing how long will it take for you to save that three hundred thousand dollars from five years of investments if you stick to the standard earning and saving i have good news for you you yes you you can enjoy that too with Singapore Real Estate Insider, we have unlocked the formula for making the right and timely investments through research and data so everyone, including busy professionals like you, can make the most of their money safely. Reach out to us to learn more and let's reach our financial goals together.